right. So Thank we you. are live. We are recording. So you can go ahead and get us started, Dan. Okay. Well, there's a couple of things that we're going to talk about. We already started speaking about city fabric and the council meeting um, regarding the Forest Park. You can go online. Joni actually put a form up. We can fill out a uh, an opinion if we want to talk about uh, what's going to be done by City Fabric and the Forest Park, as well as as well as for um, Campfire. So Campfire is going to be signing up. It looks like for two to three years. So that's good. And then the rest of it is the plan for the park, minus a few things that we've talked about. So. Um, that will be this coming Tuesday night um, at 5 o'clock. You can sign up. Um, we will put the information back out. Everybody on, on the DeForest board has got it. We'll put it back out everywhere that we can. And then, old business, um, the police are still re walking through the wetlands at different hours of the day between 5, five and 8 o'clock at night to see if they can catch any of the stuff that's going on in the, in the corner over by the bridge on Long Beach Boulevard. That hasn't been, um, they haven't caught, they caught anyone yet, but they'll let me know when that occurs. And then on October 27th, of course, we have the Jazz Festival, the virtual Jazz Festival. So that'll be coming up. And let's see, well, we're gonna, this is gonna be a short meeting, it looks like. <laughs> Yeah. I don't see John. I don't see John. I don't see Malia. So we will go directly to uh, May. I guess we'll go to Megan and our friendship with Jordan. Yes. So who wants to start off? Well, Megan. I will start off and I will introduce our new principal at Jordan and let her have the floor for most of it so you can get to know her and what's happening on campus. And then I'm happy okay. to, to take questions at the end. I'm sure some will come up. Uh, it is good to be with all of you again to Forest Park, as we were saying earlier, is one of my favorite neighborhood association meetings because they're so uh, well attended and well structured and you guys are so deeply invested um, in your neighborhood that it's uh, always a bright light in the work that gets done in the city uh, during some hard times. So thank you for having us. Uh, tonight I want to introduce Keisha Irving who is new to Jordan High School, but not new to Long Beach Unified School District. She has been, uh, she is a veteran administrator and uh, can tell her own story, but we are absolutely thrilled to have her at Jordan as we uh, embark on what is a unique year and, and a time really of rebuilding and, and moving education in a different direction as we move forward. We talk about, it won't probably ever go back to how it was. We get to have the opportunity to really build back really intentionally programmatically, uh, curriculum wise, and uh, with our uh, students and families in very different places than they were a year ago. So I, I will let Crystal have the floor, Keisha have the floor. Uh, there is another Crystal Irving at Polly, my apologies. Um, that's my so cousin she, actually. I figured there was probably some relation because that's how Long Beach works, man, I tell you. Um, so Keisha, you go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us about the great stuff you're doing at Jordan this year. Okay. I, as Megan said, I'm Keisha Irving. I'm the proud principal of Jordan High School. Not only am I an LBUSD product, but I was born and raised here in Long Beach in what some would call Central Long Beach, East Side of Long Beach, or PCH, that area. I went to elementary school at a school called CIS, which is no longer there, but was, is actually now the parking lot of Long Beach City College on PCH in Orange. Then I went to Hill Junior High School, and then I graduated from Poly in 1987. You guys were mentioning Santa Barbara a little earlier. I went to UC Santa Barbara, got a degree in English. Right after graduating from UC Santa Barbara, I started in education, 1991. My first teaching assignment was right here in North Long Beach at Hamilton Middle School. So I was at Hamilton for five years. After Hamilton, I went to Cabrillo High School when it first started. And before it was Cabrillo, it was a little tiny school called Savannah with just ninth graders. So I was there for two years. Then I went on to teach at Cabrillo, become an administrator there. And then other than Cabrillo, I have been an assistant principal at Rogers Middle School, 
Renaissance High School for the Arts, Milliken, and now I am here at Jordan. Have a little more experience here on the North Side too. When I was in college, I would come home every winter break, spring break, in the summer, and I actually was a camp counselor at the Forest Park and Coolidge Park. So, kind of know this North Long Beach area, and I'm really glad to be back. So, yeah. <laughs> little bit about myself. Um, just glad to be here um, on the north side. A little bit about my educational philosophy. I really and truly believe that all students have the right to a quality education that prepares them for post-secondary success, be that, be that college, the workforce, whatever it is that they choose, we need to prepare them for that. And I think that that preparation needs to take place in a classroom where they're they are respected individually and culturally. So those things are extremely important to me that students see that we respect who and what they are when they come to campus. <laughs> things that we have going on here at campus is we have like great pathways. We have five great pathways going on Unfortunately, the students aren't on campus, can't wait to get them back here. But our pathways are ACE, which is Advanced Manufacturing and Construction and Engineering. So that's our construction pathway, engineering. They do awesome things like soapbox racers. They make three-dimensional art, just fabulous things that I would love for you guys to be able to see at some point. We have AIMS, which is our medical pathway. LEAPS, which is our law enforcement and fire pathway, JMAC, which is media and communication, and IB, which is our honors program. So we have a lot of neat things going on here. We talked a little bit earlier, since the students aren't here on campus, we have to do things virtually. So we had a, our first virtual rally um, yesterday to celebrate the Latinx community. So we celebrated them and we also celebrated our students of the month. So we're looking forward to engaging our students and community as much as we can, not just now, but once the pandemic ends and we can get everyone back on campus. I was speaking with, I don't remember who it was earlier, but they were asking as a principal of Jordan, what are things that we need from the community? So I've been thinking of that. And as I think of that, I feel as if we need guest speakers, we need mentors that reflect the student population that we here have here on the campus of Jordan High School. If there's any scholarships that are available, just let us know about those volunteers. Like come to our events. We wanna show you all of the great things that we have going on on campus. So when we're back and we have any of our musicals or plays or athletic events, we would really love to see you there. Um, purchasing Jordan gear. We want Jordan paraphernalia and things out in the community. We want to show that Jordan pride to everyone. And what we really, really need is for everyone to be a cheerleader for Jordan. Because as we said before, there's some people who have certain perceptions of Jordan that go back decades. And we really want them to know that this is a fabulous place. And we have things on this campus that no other high school in the district has. So. Those are things that will really be nice. And I would love to give all of you a tour of the campus once the pandemic ends. So you can see firsthand what we have going on here, the beautiful buildings with the construction, the excellent educational opportunities. So you can speak to that firsthand to others that you see. It's cool that you mentioned uh, having gear out in uh, the community. I was riding my bike actually to drop off my ballot last weekend and I found I saw a Jordan hat on a young man and I said nice hat. He goes go Panthers. So that was up here in Bixby Knowles by the Dana Branch Library. Um, but like you said I don't see it too often. I see lots of other gear from other schools uh, so I appreciate the effort. I did see the care package that you sent to the superintendent so she was properly geared up in her Jordan paraphernalia. Yes. Um, so thank you for doing that. Of course, of course, my pleasure. Yeah, I and wanna get Jordan gear all across Long Beach. 
In the chat box, I put uh, the link to the construction update for Jordan in case anybody wants to take a look at that. It actually has a really cool flyover video or rendering that they did of what the latest project will be um, that will be happening at the front of the school. As you can see, um, hopefully you've seen the beautiful facade improvement on the front where they finished um, the administration building, they uh, finished the parking lot, they put up that very cool uh, marquee with the name. Uh, can you give us an update? I know uh, the auditorium was a little behind schedule for lots of reasons, but uh, your library and media center should be opening soon as well. Is that true? They, or at least when kids get back? Yeah, they'll definitely be open when kids get back, but they are slated to be completed at the end of this month. So Great. really cool. Yay. And the auditorium is the most beautiful facility that I've seen in a while. Like I was really excited when I saw Wilson's and Polly's and not that I should be comparing, but neither one of them can touch what Jordan's looks like. So it's going to be a real gem for us here. Uh, Keisha, we have a question on social media. Okay. Um, Sonia asks, who should a guest mentor or speaker contact? If you want to go directly to one of our pathways because you're a guest speaker who wants to speak to the arts or the engineering program, then it would be the pathway lead. And that information is on their website. However, if you just want to speak in general, you can contact the office manager. Her name is Teresa Boone, and she'll, con she'll make sure that she takes you to the right person. So she'll put you in contact with, with whoever you need to talk to. Uh, is it possible for you to go ahead and send us or um, provide us with that contact information? So that way I think it'd just be easier for people to know, like have a, um, you know, we would want to reduce barriers, right? So we'll have that direct contact so we can pass that along to our, um, to our residents. Absolutely, yes. I'm glad that there's interest already. Um, Lori asks, what if I have interest in proposing a project um, for the students to participate in? Here, here, let me tell you about it. So what it is, um, litter is, seems to be a baseline for a lot of problems, uh, runs down the area. We've talked about it in my neighborhood association. We have cleanups all the time. There's an education issue with trying to get the word out that we shouldn't be doing. Um, you, we need to inform kids somehow or another that they need to be cleaning up litter and being aware of it. And what we were thinking of doing is having some kind of a contest where the kids could do like little um, video bits and, and see and then post them somewhere to inform people about not littering. I know it may, it's not fully flushed out. We've just talked about it. So I don't know if there's um, a way to do that. I mean, have a little contest, maybe put a little money together and give the winner some money or just recognition that they had the cutest little video or something to do some kind of an advertising kind of campaign. Cause I really would like the city to do it like a litter free, Long Beach kind of thing. So people were aware, but there's not any awareness being put out there into the community. So Megan, I don't know if that would be something that has to go through the district. We have a contact person on our campus who's our activities director, and her name is Michelle Green. I can get that information to you as well. But any activities that happen on campus go through her. Yeah, I don't know that this necessarily needs to come through administration or through the board at all. I know there has been interest from the city um, pre-pandemic, of course, uh, around initiating. They used to do a big joint litter education campaign. So I know um, I've heard the mayor mention something about that. I can inquire and see uh, if there's anything in the works from a more comprehensive approach. But if, they're, if you're looking to partner with individual schools, um, that working with Ms. Irving or activities directors or principals at elementary schools would probably be the best way to go. Okay, I, I mean, we still have to put together something and you know, with COVID, we just kind of backed way off. We've had people come in from environmental services and talk to us. We've tried to plant seeds about developing an anti-litter program of some kind, um, but we just, we haven't gotten there yet. 
so what what I'll do, I guess, is uh, I'll convene with uh, the individual that that uh, I guess she's done this with other people. She lives in my neighborhood. She's kind of new to our uh, neighborhood association, and see if she would be interested in helping to like lay out an outline to to give it some form before we contact you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, one of the other things that you can do to find out what's happening at Jordan, I put the, the school website in the chat box as well. But if any of you are on Instagram, uh, LB Jordan High School, and I will put that in the chat box as well. They have a great Instagram feed. Um, right now, it's mostly staff uh, dancing, not mostly, but there's some great uh, engagement work that they're doing to connect with students um, while they are not on campus. So, uh, it, it has a lot of the activities. It's got the panther out in the neighborhood, uh, bringing gifts oh, nice. and balloons. Uh, it, talk, it gives schedule information. So if you're a kid, you can see that you had an asynchronous day on Wednesday. Um, a former principal, Alta Cook, who was the principal years ago, uh, was there for a visit. So there's a great picture of her on there as well. So if you're on Instagram, I highly recommend um, following any of the local schools. They are really trying hard to use that as a tool to connect with the community as well. And our ASB just started a Twitter account, Jordan High School ASB, last week. So that's another venue as well. What does ASB stand for again? Associated Student Body. Okay. Um, I have a question. This is Joni. Um, if you miss Irving. Um, besides kind of, you know, getting out in the community and, you know, I know you talked about kind of, we, we, you and I talked about dispelling kind of some of the people's previous experiences, you know, getting people to wear kind of the paraphernalia and get kind of the name of Jordan out there. What else would you consider to be maybe kind of challenges that Jordan is facing currently? <coughs> and maybe, and then also how we as the, the community can partner along with you um, to help address that. Huh. So, in my three months with no students here. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I would say, and, and I don't know if you can do anything about this, but just, just making the students feel connected to the school. It's really difficult for them when they're at home and they're being educated via a computer screen. And, and we do the best they, we can, the teachers do the best they can, but it's just not the same connection that we could have or we want to have with them. So that's the biggest challenge that I see right now. Other than that, I really haven't had the opportunity to see how the campus operates in full. So I can't speak to that right now. But again, all I really know at this point is I really want to dispel the misinformation that is out there about Jordan. Thank you. Yeah. I've found that this group can be a great cheerleader for all things North Long Beach, especially our community and our kids. Um, you know, some of the things that people need to dispel are from other parts of town who make assumptions about who we are and who our community is in North Long Beach. And, and Ms. Irving, you've been engaged in North Long Beach long enough to know that that's not unique necessarily to just North Long Beach. The West Side um, can also have some of those same uh, assumptions that get made about our students and kids. And I think everything we can do, I think that's one of the reasons we do the, the banners on the, on the polls around graduation time, anything we can do to call attention to the great work um, and the great kids we have at Jordan is really important and appropriate. And it is tough right now, I will not um, lie. We all wish kids were in school, uh, probably nobody more than other than parents, uh, principals and administrators who really understand that this is not the ideal situation. Uh, it's no, it's not where any of us wanted to be. I don't think it's where any of us expected to be. I know I expected this to be handled a little more appropriately at a federal level so that we weren't here um, in mid-October still having to stay away from campuses. Um, so understanding that the connection to each other and community is difficult but really important. And for as much as kids spent time on the computer before and connected through devices, the times that I have seen kids in person, and I've heard this from other uh, administrators and teachers, 
there is a real longing for a physical connection. So when you see our kids out in the neighborhood um, after school hours, say hello, ask how they're doing, how's school going, something that makes them feel seen and that people understand this is a really tough time uh, for kids. We know it's a tough time for everybody, but we are uh, very well aware that from an emotional standpoint and a mental health perspective, this is tough on kids who are struggling uh, potentially anyway. We know have, we have a number of, of families in North Long Beach. We know North Long Beach is disproportionately impacted by COVID for lots of reasons. We have lots of families that are essential worker families, uh, lots of kids who have been working to help support their families because other family members have lost jobs. Um, so there's an awareness and a sensitivity to, to our neighborhood and our community at this time that it's not ideal. So when you see kids, I know uh, it's easy to pick on kids, especially when uh, they are were perceived that they're maybe they're not acting appropriately, but making them feel seen and loved and appreciated and just checking in on them whenever you happen to come across them would be really great. Um, I have a suggestion. Piggybacking on what Lori said about doing the um, trash pickup video, I know that you're all saying that um, maybe start at, at the elementary school level. That is more akin to the older kids because that's what they do. And if you give, give a boy a gift card or something, to these kids, they're going to respond. Maybe we can attach it to something because we didn't get to do the Teen Summit this year. Maybe we can attach what Lori's saying to that, to keep that out in front of the kids, but also give them something to do that they're already doing, but an incentive to keep, to get them to go further with. That's just my thought. It's not a bad idea, really. I mean, um... What we were thinking it would engage them, allow them to be creative with some kind of a video. You'd just use your phone and take a clip for a minute or two, and we could post it in our North Long Beach uh, group pages that we have, you know, or what, whatever. I, I just, it would give them some visibility. It would give them something to do. Um, and I mean, basically, it's just laying out the parameters, what we're trying to accomplish and what the rules of the game would be. But but that's the thought. I mean, the idea is to make it kind of a creative, fun kind of exercise. And in a way, you create community that way, too, right? Like you connect the students who are all kind of engaging in this and watching this and looking at their peers. And, you know, particularly, I think particularly for the, you know, the freshman class, right, who haven't gotten the opportunity to see anybody, right? Like this is their first year and they haven't gotten the chance of being on Jordan's campus and seeing what that feels like. So anyway, I think that you could create community um, in that space, I think is a, is, a, is a wonderful idea. Well, and then maybe we could even have a class competition. So juniors, you know, sophomores, whatever. It's just a thought. I, I just think it's, um, it kind of gives them something to do that's not too awfully difficult, but that it could be very helpful. I, I some sometime or somewhere or another, I'd really like to have some kind of a signage campaign though too. So uh, anyway, what kind, of, what kind of signage? Just like in the windows of businesses or something. So maybe it's even a poster contest for anti-littering, something. I, I'm just trying to, I'm, it's gonna be multi, multimedia, but I mean, one would be video and then, you know, maybe something else. And then maybe have somebody write about why you don't uh, litter and then share that somewhere. I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of ways we can get the word out, but it's also helpful, I think, just to, the awareness of it's so important. Anyway, off my so soapbox. <laughs> Um, I had another question from uh, Facebook uh, from Sonia who said, could we send care packs similar to what parents send to students who are away at college? I think she's saying, could we send care packs to students? Care packages in, in, in what sense? What are we I guess I, I guess the idea because we're I think Megan was mentioning about you know the fact that you know kids are kind of isolated maybe they have needs things like that so I think Sonia was just mentioning like would it be would it be useful um, exercise to try to send them you know care packages or maybe even just something you know care packages of something fun or interesting or 
I don't I, I have no idea what we would put in the care packages that might make them, you know, feel a little bit more spirited or connected to to, to Jordan. I'm sure we can bring mm -hmm. some ideas, but I think that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I think I, that's go ahead. I would say that's it's a good thing to think on. And I think as staff and counselors are interacting with students and families and finding out what their needs are, uh, something may start to emerge as we get um, a little more settled into what this looks and feels like this online learning. Um, so I would imagine that if staff, I know they're doing a ton of different things, uh, could, could keep in mind that there's a community, Miss Irving, that is willing to do some support work. So if you had a, a family or a student that had some specific needs that perhaps reaching out to Joni, who could network with the community to come up with some of those things and, and drop off them at school for people to be able to pick up if they were needed would be really uh, one way that they could connect. Yeah, definitely. We would be happy to, to do something like that. Ms. Irving, I know, um, and I cannot remember where I saw it this week, but you are posting the student updates, the videos that I'm assuming it's our JMAC kids are doing. Yes. Uh, where can we find those? I was just trying to see if I could find them on Twitter and I didn't. They are on the Jordan web page. I, let me take a look here. I know he sent us an email. Those would be great to post on like yeah, North, they're, Long Beach, North Long Beach Community Action Partnership. I, I, those would be fantastic. I'd love to see those. Yeah, they do a great job. So when you get to get back on campus, if you haven't been, the JMAC, um, in, the, in the rebuild, a full TV studio was put in, a full professional TV studio. So the JMAC, which is the video uh, program, is learning to utilize that. So they do these live news clips and kind of talk about what's happening at school. And there are students, they would be great for you guys to be able to, to push out occasionally, um, just so folks can hear and see our kids in action. Yeah. I think we need many more opportunities to interact with people of all ages and ethnicities and parts of town. I just think we really need more opportunities to do that. It's hard in an environment where we have to be isolated. But so video and Zoom are helpful, but I don't, maybe there's some kind of a program or a situation that could bring people together on Zoom. Like maybe we talk about a topic, a neighborhood topic or something. It, it's just a thought. Because I don't have any real connection to, to the kids at all, other than my neighborhood kids, right? So I, I don't know. I, I think all of us wouldn't mind participating one way or the other. Did anybody participate in the uh, adopt a senior? Do you know, I, Megan? I, I wasn't here at that time. Well, it was a program that someone put together independently because the kids weren't having a graduation, as we all know. Right, so, it was district-wide, yeah. It started, okay. it started with some families in the Millican area. Yes, and I participated in that and it worked out really, it worked out really well. You just adopted the kid that you chose, you read the little bio, what they were doing, and you got to choose who you adopted. I adopted too. Okay. And they were so grateful to see somebody show up and realize that, yes, we know you're here and we know you're missing your graduation. So it started off with just seniors, but it ended up being even elementary school children. Yeah, hmm. that might be an interesting thing to try and focus uh, specifically on Jordan or North exactly. Long Beach kids. Because there, I know when it first started, I did participate and I uh, ended up with a student from EPHS, which is a... Uh, the independent study program, not that we're all on, not on that now, um, but that's a program that I, uh, I try to support those kids as much as possible because mm -hmm. uh, they're working really hard. And I was glad to see towards the end that more students from North Long Beach were engaged. Uh, it did tend to stay a little bit more segregated over um, in the neighborhoods that it started in the schools that it started from. But if, if we're looking to do something locally, I think that would be a great opportunity yeah, for exactly folks to opt good. in to even have just a connection of an email or just a quick note to drop off. That'd be a great thing to explore. <laughs> Is that Keith? I don't know where that came from. I got paranoid for a second that I was like, did somebody, random person, like- Right, do you, you lock us down? Do you lock down our Zoom call? 
Right. I was like, because, you know, well, I'm a host, so I, I will happily, you know me, I'll happily boot people out. But no, I don't, I have no, I have no idea where that came from. Actually, that was me. I have oh. to confess. <laughs> I, <laughs> she's I still in the that. office, so she's got music on in the background. That was actually the J- J-Town update that I was looking for. So it's oh. on. Oh. <laughs> oh, very cool. <laughs> so it's on YouTube. What I'll do is I'll speak with our teacher who's in charge of that and talk to him about maybe putting it on our Twitter, on our Instagram, on our webpage. So there's other avenues for yeah. you to see. But that's it. great. But yeah, if, it's are- on, if it's on YouTube and is there, does, does Jordan have a YouTube page? Is that what this is on? Or J-Mac have a, a YouTube page? Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's a public YouTube or not because it has like videos of kids and stuff. So I don't know how how open that is. But I mean, because I, w- I would, if he has a YouTube page, like some of us would be happy to go on there and just share the YouTube link on some of our, our mm-hmm. social media websites and say, hey, you know, check out our students from Jordan. They're doing some really great stuff. Like I would be, I would love to do that. Okay. I will look into that for you a little later because if I click on again, you'll, you know, do my music. <laughs> We're going to hear it again. <laughs> yes. That's, it's, it's okay. Look, hey, we, I, well, the message you must, might have been on that, that, uh, that uh, meeting for the city council where uh, some council member used the bathroom and we heard the toilet flush. So it could be always be worse. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that <laughs> never happened. <laughs> that happened, so, yeah. Oh, I found it too. I'll try to put one in the link. So do we have any more questions or anything else? Uh, oh, I had uh, one question. Um, uh, from Shahara. She said, I'm curious of the difference between Jordan High and Jordan Plus. I just discovered Jordan Plus a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I'm happy. Um, am I still, am I muted? No, okay. No, um, I, I'm happy to speak to that. So J Plus doesn't exist as a school anymore. So J Plus back in the day, and it was probably well over 10 or 12 years ago, was started as the Jordan Freshman Academy. Um, and so the freshmen were sequestered off there. Part of it, um, it was done for a lot of reasons before my time on the board. Um, and so up until a few years ago, they that then switched over. The freshmen were brought back to campus because that was what's best for having freshmen. You can't have freshmen out there on their own. They think they're all that. And so they needed to get checked by some of the upperclassmen every once in a while. Um, so then it became a credit recovery site. So it became a site where uh, we had block scheduling for students who needed to do credit recovery. Um, and it operated as a regular school just for students um, who were behind in some credits. And then as the construction continued and we needed to use it as, and as declining enrollment at the main campus happened, it was decided to integrate that back into Jordan's main campus since there was space with the new building. Uh, so right now it is being used as temporary housing, again, when we're back in session, for students from schools who are undergoing major Measure E construction renovation. I think the next school that was slated to go there is Hughes Middle School. Their seventh and eighth graders uh, were going to be moved off campus while they did the full uh, HVAC renovation on Hughes's campus because there's not enough room. So they would leave one class there and that class would kind of be in the buildings not being worked on. So it's being used as interim housing for construction projects. I think it was scheduled to have a year off anyway because some of those other projects were pushed a year. Uh, so currently it's being used uh, in partnership with the state for COVID testing. And we also do have a head start on campus that is away from the COVID testing uh, that may so that, be operating that some head start folks. Is that the is that the campus on Bort? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I went there. I, I got a COVID test two days ago, and it was like empty there. And so, if you need a COVID test, it's not a bad place to go. I went to Veteran Stadium earlier in the week, and it was also fairly empty. So there's lots of tests available for people who want to get tested. Hey, Dan, that might be a good segue to our next speaker. That, uh, that's COVID exactly testing. where I was going. So are you, you ready, Joni? Go ahead. Uh, well, first, I want to just thank uh, uh, Megan and Keisha for, for joining us tonight. Obviously, you're more than welcome to stay on the call, but I just want to thank you for your time and answering our questions and inviting us to be active participants in the life of the students that go to our, our local high school. 
Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I'll get the information on guest speakers to you and our activities director to you so we can make sure that we stay in contact. Okay, and I'm gonna stick in the chat. I'm also gonna stick our neighborhood association email in there. So you'll have a direct contact to us in the neighborhood association. Okay, sounds good. And you should end um, your day, Ms. Irving, and I will stay on in case anyone has any questions. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we will release you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night, you guys. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you very much. Um, and so uh, without further ado, I want to introduce uh, Kelly Colopy. For those of you who are not familiar with her, she is the director um, of our Long Beach Department of Health and Human Services, which is basically it's the Long Beach's health department. For those of you who don't know, uh, we are very, very, very blessed to have um, to be a city that has its own health department. Uh, I think there's only three local municipal municipalities, right, that have their own their own yeah. city health department. Most rely on the county, and so uh, in a particularly in a pandemic, um, this has been uh, invaluable, I would say, uh, for the city, um, and has definitely elevated the um, the visibility of what I joke as our the city's largest nonprofit because they do so much <laughs> on grants. Um, and so I was happy. I will say this much before you speak, Kelly. I was exceedingly happy to hear for some additional concrete core funding from the city in the last budget cycle uh, for the health department. As somebody who is training epidemiology, I recognize how valuable uh, you guys are and how important you are. And I'm, it's a, it's a, while I'm sad about the coronavirus and COVID, the one thing that has come out of this that is a bright spot is the highlighting of the resources that we have here in the city that are not, I think a lot, a lot of people knew we had, so. Thank you, uh, and good evening, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, All right. so I just wanted to, um, one, just uh, let you know, so our health department right now is we have about 40 programs. And a lot of people don't know that we have 40 programs in our single department, um, you know, and as we were just discussing, most of those are grant funded. Um, so we do, uh, we run over 100 grants uh, in our effort to, to do all the work that we do. And, you know, those programs run from, um, you know, community health and all the, you know, healthy eating, active living kind of things. We run clinics. Uh, we do family planning and HIV and STD and tuberculosis, as well as all the immunizations. Um, we've, we, uh, we're doing all the public health emergency management and all the surveillance, the things that are really being highlighted right now through the, uh, through this pandemic. Um, we also run the housing authority and homeless services, um, as well as the violence prevention, um, and the upcoming youth strategic plan. So we're everywhere. Uh, there's a, we have the black infant health program, um, and WIC. Um, and all the um, enrollment in, in insurance. So Medi-Cal um, enrollment and those programs also fall within our bailiwick. So we have a lot of different opportunities. Um, we normally have nine sites. Uh, we do have one in Houghton Park, except that it's been closed down for the past year and we are rebuilding that. So the inside of the Houghton Park site is gonna be beautiful. We're so excited. Um, I'm actually gonna be taking a tour. I know I'm so excited. We're going to take a tour next week. It's completely in, in demolished on the inside, but we're going to start picking out what the inside looks like. And so that's really exciting for us. And we are putting um, two new clinical rooms there to bring testing and other things um, to that site, as well as our Center for Families and Youth. Um, we were just refunded to do our fatherhood program, which has been highly successful, where we work with fathers, uh, fatherhood skills and job placement skills and and others and they bring their kids and it's a really cool program. So uh, there's just a lot going on overall. And, and uh, while this last six months uh, in this COVID response has been, you know, has shattered most of our lives in the way that we have normally lived them, right? Everything is, has taken over in a very different way. And I will tell you that for the health department it's completely shifted uh, our, you know, much of our focus. Uh, we've reassigned over a hundred people in our department to take over to participate in the COVID response. Um, so it's been an adventure for all of us, for sure. Um, but I wanted to just provide some just updates. Yeah. Someone else, someone else a question? No. Okay. Um, so I wanted to just provide a little bit of an update on our COVID um, and then happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, so we have, uh, as of this morning, 
12,547 cases uh, within our city. And that's led to, um, that's about 30 today. At the height of the pandemic, when it was really, you know, just in July, we had up over 200 a day. Um, and now that we're back down to 30, I have to tell you, I feel a lot better about it. Um, we've had 254 people who have died uh, from COVID in our city, which is uh, over 10 times more than what the flu. You often hear like, oh, it's kind of like the flu um, kind of thing. It's not. It is far worse um, for some of our population. And uh, again, um, as of uh, a month ago, it was over 10 times the death rate of flu. And, you know, we, and we continue to lose people almost every day, uh, just, you know, between two and five people every day um, that we lose. Um, most of those folks are over the age of 50. Uh, we have had a few folks uh, in the age of 30 to 49 um, within our city. So everybody has an underlying health condition, but when you ask about what that is, it can be well-managed asthma, it can be well-managed diabetes, someone can feel completely healthy and managed in all the work they're doing, and it can still strike. So I think a lot of people thought that deaths only occurred in the old people and the people that were in like a nursing home, and that's not what it looks like. So uh, we've been really trying to help people understand that, uh, you know, it does, it takes people by surprise. Um, and many of our family members and others have no people who have been impacted overall. Um, you've been hearing a lot, I think, um, about LA County. The, so the state now has four tiers um, of which you can move in terms of the restrictions in, in the state. And um, Long Beach is aligned with LA County. They only look at the tiers at a county level. And uh, we have remained in the most restrictive tier. So we've been sitting in this purple tier for what feels like ever. Um, and we have to move, our numbers have to hit a certain mark um, to be able to move to the red tier, which is your, your less restrictive tier. Um, and so you have to have a, a case rate per 100,000 of under seven um, and a positivity rate of under eight. Our positivity rate is great, it's in the 3%, and we're feeling pretty good about that. But the case rate at the county level continues to be in sort of the mid sevens. Um, we had a, saw a little bit of a bump after. Um, uh, after Labor Day, not a spike, but a bump, and it was just enough to uh, to keep us in there. So we're working real hard to try and bling that below the seven, uh, which will allow for more things, uh, more things to open. Um, the state did, though, just announce and release guidance around gatherings. So the state order has said no gatherings unless you are related to a business, and um, they just released guidance, and we're updating our order today that says up to three households. Um, can gather, can come together and meet and hang out as long as you're outside, uh, as long as you are distanced, and that you wear a mask except when you're eating. So, you know, people come together and you start to get real comfortable with maybe the family down the street and maybe another family down the street. And the, you all hear me? My, so my internet's funny. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so, you, so you pick maybe two other families to go with your household right? And you sort of, be, that becomes your sort of group. And you want that to be fairly stable. So what we encourage people not to do is one night meet with two other families, and then the next night meet with two different ones, and then the next night two different ones. Uh, we really like pick the group that is your, that is your space and, um, and it allows for some gathering. And then, um, and I'll answer that, Lori, in a minute. So, but right now, the focus is really on outdoor and pretty much everything in Long Beach um, and in LA County is operating outdoors. Aside from hair and nail salons inside at 25%, uh, no other, um, none of the other things aside from like grocery stores and others are, are meeting indoors. Um, so right now we've got our gyms that are operating outside. I drove down um, Third Street the other day and there were like a bunch of people doing, you know, crunches on the sidewalk, <laughs> like with a coach. And there are people all over the place doing outdoor things. Um, so that's the that's our most recent update. We also are allowing um, uh, what were previously bars to operate as restaurants. So they are allowed to have a host permit, and then they must have food, and they must have partner with food. And so you can't stand around and be drinking and act like a bar. You have to act like a restaurant and follow all the restaurant guidance. But it allows for additional businesses to open. Um, and we know that income is so important um, as part of our overall wellness. And we are trying to help with that while we're also keeping people safe. Um, we are preparing for a time when we can be inside. Um, 
So the next round, when we get to the um, red tier, it would allow for restaurants to open with 25% capacity indoors. It would allow gyms to open at 10% capacity indoors. It would allow for like museums and other things to open in a restricted manner. So there's a lot of different things that the red tier allows for, but just a starting point, like a small amount. And each tier you can move forward a little bit more. So we're paying very close attention to all of that. Um, just in terms of the testing, so you talked about Jordan Plus, you know, you walk in, you get a test, no one there. Um, most of our sites, you can get same day, uh, same day appointments. Um, in fact, all of our sites right now, same day appointments, you just drive up and, you know, and uh, like with your appointment. So, so far, like get this number, we have tested through our city sites, 135,000 people. So 135 tests have been given across our system um, by the city. And then if you count everybody that's gone to see a doctor or someone else, over 240,000 tests have been processed um, for residents of the city of Long Beach. Uh, which is just an, you know, just a huge number um, for our folks. So uh, we're real proud of the ability to provide all of that um, and, uh, and, and glad that we've been able to do that uh, for the city. Um, we've also had, um, we've popped up shelters and run homeless, um, you know, just we put together a lot of homeless uh, sheltering opportunities throughout uh, to make sure that people are safe. And we considered, we continue to keep some of our most frail um, and ill folks in, a, in, in, um, in motels to make sure that they are safe as can be um, while we're negotiating other properties. And we also just opened the year round shelter right there at um, on Atlantic Avenue um, that, uh, that opened last week. And so we were able to move folks in. Um, and the female beds are already full and we got a little more room in the male beds um, and we're getting ready to open the couples section. Um, there is a couple section and we're just getting ready to open that. So I have a couple, um, I have a couple, uh, you know, so um, are your bowling alleys going to open soon? Um, right now, we're not allowed to open them, I believe. I don't have my cheat sheet with me that tells me all the different state tiers and when. Um, but a lot of, I think that, um, you know, and I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'll see if I can find my, I'll see if I can find my list. Um, the next question is, are, you have fathering classes, do you have parenting classes? Um, we do work um, with families through like our WIC program and others. Um, the classes of the, the grant that we have, once again, when you're grant funded, the, um, you, are, you, know, you, you really do align with that. And so that is much more fatherhood related, but also focuses on the father's relationship with the mother um, and building a strong relationship, whether they live together or not, um, and with the kids. So it provides a lot of parenting as well, but in terms of just basic parenting classes, those would come through the Black Infant Health Program and some support through WIC, uh, just to be able around nutrition and relationships and things. Uh, the tests are definitely still free. Um, anything that we offer through the city or at Jordan Plus um, are free. Um, and if you have insurance and you go to your physician, you should also get it for free through them because it is a preventive service that is covered by insurance um, and should be free. So anywhere you go, um, you should not have to pay for it. Um, are the tel tests the health department provides the name? They are nasal swabs. Yeah. So basically, um, they're self tests. So I think it's the Jordan Plus that they actually administer it. But the ones that, that we do, you drive up, we show you a little video, and we make, tell you what to do. And then we hand you a kit. And then you do that, and you like swab your nose and things and put everything back into the kit and, and hand it back out the window and drive off. Um, so that's how that's done. And then we deliver those every day to our lab who processes them all. Um, the good, the cool thing is, is that lab is now going to, um, they're also going to test for flu. So a lot of times people might show up and they think that they have COVID or they have, they have some kind of symptom and they're not sure what it is. And so we'll test, um, the lab called and said they also had that capacity. So anyone who gets a COVID test will also get a flu test and you would be notified if you had the flu. Uh, just as you would be notified if you had COVID. And uh, we love that one for everybody who gets the test and knows what's going on. But two, because we get a lot more information than we've ever been able to learn about flu in the meantime, um, which is really great opportunity for the health department and our surveillance um, around the flu. So we're really excited about that partnership. Uh, who administers the test at CSULB? For their students or for, or there's a test site there that's like a Kaiser site or something. Which one are you talking about, Megan? Oh, uh, it must be the Kaiser site. 
So there is a Kaiser site there for Kaiser patients that's using the Cal State campus. Oh, okay. um, but for when there was an outbreak at Cal State Long Beach and we, our mobile testing clinic did all the tests there. Thank you. Uh, the turnaround time for the test result um, is under 48 hours and they're often coming in within 24 hours. So really quick turnaround time um, for our test sites right now. Uh, I did a test of this. There you go, 30 hours. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, when we set all this stuff up, you know, it came and it came so fast and the tests weren't available anywhere. And we had 25 tests available in our public health lab. And that's what we can handle given like all the machines that it took and everything. And now we're up to the point where we have the machinery to do at least 300 um, lab tests in our own public health lab. And so we are supporting like a skilled nursing facility or others. Um, we'll run those. Um, and then we do now have a mobile testing van. So that van drives around. And so if you are an older adult who can't leave your house or a skilled nursing facility or sometimes a, a homeless shelter, then they make an appointment and the van goes there um, and does the testing. Uh, we also are doing um, pop-up test sites. So we just did one Washington neighborhood on Wednesday. Um, we'll be doing one in District 6 um, at the, um, in Cambodia town and then we'll be coming to North Long Beach. It's in an elementary school. I'm trying to remember the site, but if you get on the site of the mobile testing, uh, you'll it's be at, able to see, what's that? It's at Grant. At Grant. Um, so, um, so we are making sure we're really looking at our maps and where we're seeing increased uh, cases. And we want to make sure that people have easy access, A, but also really trust the process. And so we're working with other um, community-based organizations uh, to really engage and help people get to, um, help people get uh, to the sites. Um, we do have um, Spanish speakers and uh, Tagalog and Cambodian speakers who, um, who are there to help uh, translate if needed uh, at the pop-up sites. Um, can you give us the link to the mobile testing website? Yeah, so the COVID-19 test site that I gave you, let me pull up the rest of it. Um, if you go to that COVID-19 test site and you go down to testing, um, Let's see, I had it up. So I'm going to muck around here for a minute with my, in the background with my, um, with my computer while I'm sitting. Um, anyway, if you, if you go down to the testing um, site in that you'll see mobile testing and how to make an appointment there. So that's a starting space, but I'll see if I can pull it up while we're on the, on the line. What other questions do we have? Well, I'm looking and trying to do this. Oh, uh, Lori yeah, said, uh, does your department make this calls about campuses being open or closed, i.e. inform Long Beach Unified School District? Uh, we don't make the calls around them. So right now, uh, the school district, um, the, the county, LA County and Long Beach um, are allowing four waivers for K through second grade. Um, there is a big process that the schools uh, go to, there needs to be mitigation plans and testing plans and a lot of things. And so um, that is allowed. So, um, and then there's also through the school district an opportunity without a waiver is to open special services. So for kids who have an IEP or maybe where Eng English is not their primary language or things, there are also opportunities um, that are allowed in that. Um, because we're still in purple, um, which is the most restrictive. We can't just open schools like we're not allowed to, um, but per the state. So the only way that we can be, that any part of the school can open is either the specialty services or the waiver program. Um, and then we, you know, we did, um, we did launch the waiver program and we are processing them when they come. Uh, in the end, the state has to approve it. So we look at it, we think it looks good or not, or we tell you to come back and answer some questions. But the state itself is the final authority on whether a school itself at this point can open um, under the waiver program. Uh, we do contact tracing. Yes, we investigate every case that comes in. So we call that person. Uh, we find out where, you know, what's, you know, who they've been with and, and for how long. And they work with us to identify who they've been with. And then we have contact tracers who follow up with those folks. Uh, to find out to, you know, to let them know that they've, um, they don't tell them who they've been around. So we don't, you know, for privacy reasons, we don't call them and go, hey, your so-and-so friend has COVID, you should watch out. But we do let them know that they've, um, that uh, they have, um, uh, that they may have been exposed and to the level of their exposure and 
things that we learn about and there really are there's high risk and low risk exposures and the high risk exposures we do we do uh, quarantine folks um, and things so um, we have we have investigated every case that has come through our door um, which has been quite a few for a while um, I think that's any other questions uh, Kelly this is Joni I had a question um, yeah. <laughs> non-COVID related, but I know you mentioned the, uh, the mobile, uh, not the mobile clinics, but basically the, the, the sites that you have all over the city, the nine different sites, and uh -huh. the one at Houghton Park. So was that, in, is that going to be, is that in the, the actual like larger Houghton Park community center, or is that in that separate set of buildings that's on the other side of the parking lot? It's the building. So, um, if you, you know you drive into the parking lot and then the mm -hmm. community center's at your front like you, right if you kept driving you'd hit it um, the building on the right as you're driving okay. into that parking lot is our north facility center it's okay so that, that there. single the single floor building that's over there yeah the brick one gotcha okay. yeah yeah um and and so the are you is the health department the only um group that's going to be operating out of that or will you be sharing that space with other organizations so our goal is to, so in terms of offices and things, like permanent offices, it's, it's a health department facility, but okay. I believe that we're setting up some hoteling space, like if an organization wants to come in or, you know, can trade off and then it will have some community space in it. So I think that um, that's it. And then what we're really hoping to do is be able to partner more closely as well with the parks facility, you know, so that they've got some nice spaces too. We don't have any space as big as what some of the parks facility spaces are. Um, but so what we want to make sure we do is that they um, is that we coordinate as much as possible. Uh, workforce development um, is going to be doing some. They're going to have some um, like youth training and things. So uh, they're going to be utilizing one of the offices to and, and part of the parks facility, but sort of working from both places uh, to work around um, employment skills and others. So we're excited for that opportunity as well. Great, thank you. Yep. Any other questions, Lori? I'm sorry, not Lori. I'm <laughs> just talking to Lori. Any right, more yeah, questions? She's Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do we have any other questions? Wow. Happy, satisfied people. Oh, I love uh, it. Um, let me see. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, so you're going you're gonna to make me eat my words, right, Joni? No, it looks like everybody's pretty happy. Thank you so much. We appreciate oh, actually, it. Oh, actually, I had, uh, sorry, my husband had one additional question. He said, yeah. is, um, does the Long Beach Health Department have a plan for, I guess, scaling to um, help administer the vaccine when it becomes available? Um, yeah, so we've been working on all that planning and working very closely with the state to identify, so the, the, at the federal and state level, there are different tiers of folks um, that go first right, or early on, and, and so they, that we're working to identify folks um, who are most at risk of COVID in the first place, um, and others, and we're trying to get those numbers uh, so that we can, you know, be on, make sure that we're getting the doses as they're coming in. Uh, I'm sure you've heard there are multiple different companies um, who are, uh, you know, working hard to get a vaccine out the door. Um, most of them take two doses, and you have to have the doses from the same company. So you couldn't like one test site has one kind and another test site has another, can't do it that way. So we're trying to work through how we would do all of that. Um, and then also one of, the, one of the companies requires a refrigerator at minus 70 degrees. Um, there's not a that lot of refrigerators sense. in the world that are minus 70 degrees. Yeah, that so, makes things difficult. Yeah, so just the whole process of this stuff is, um, is a lot of detail and our team is, has been doing a lot of work um, uh, locally as well as um, you know, regionally about how we're gonna do all this. Uh, we do have a distribution site that's, um, that we run that's in the fire headquarters. There's a huge big warehouse there. And so we're making sure we have all the stuff we need to be able to hold it and take care of it and make sure it gets to people. And then the other thing is we're doing free flu shots too. So, you know, I encourage you all, uh, we're doing free flu shots on uh, Thursdays and Saturdays at Vet Stadium and Cabrillo High School. And so I encourage you to um, make sure you get your flu shots uh, this year as well, and they're free. So uh, just pull on up, 
Uh, you do it while you're in your car. So you stick your arm, you fill out the form, you put your arm out, you get your shot, you drive off. It takes no time. Um, and so we really want to encourage people to do that as well. I have a quick question for you. You handle the homeless, um, how, the housing for the homeless, right? I do. Aren't there, or finding them housing or not? So um, the multi-service center reports to the health department is aligned under our work. And then, so the new shelter that just opened, the bridge housing, um, our year round, which is the first year round we've ever, you know, that we've had 24-7 um, year round, uh, opened last week. Um, and then we've got, um, we've got a motel, we've got a, win we've got a, uh, and a, um, the winter shelter uh, program, which normally is only, um, you know, December one until uh, March has been open all year this year. And so it's never been closed. And we've been, we've, that is full and we've been, um, that's been a, a key part to the work we're doing. We had two sites set up in parks for a while. Um, but then we were able to get people into into places other than in big congregate settings. So we feel good about that. So did you encourage people to do the census or did somebody come in to do that? Yeah, we worked really closely um, and we were supporting at the multi-service center and reaching out as much as we could um, to do that. And we're also um, on the 25th, we're having um, mobile um, mobile ballots. So we're gonna, the LA County is bringing their mobile voting center uh, to the multi-service center to make sure that people who are homeless have access to the ability to vote. And so we're really excited about that as an opportunity too. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Do we have anything else? Any other questions? Okay. Don't Thank anything. You Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Yay. Tune into the jazz go. festival. I'm sorry, what did you say, I, Megan? Tune into the jazz festival this Sunday. Yeah, it looks like uh, Jonathan popped in and popped out from uh, Councilman Richardson's office um, and put a couple of announcements in the um, in the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and read those, Dan. Okay. Uh, he said, uh, I wanted to provide council updates. So one is Uptown Jazz Festival is this Sunday starting at 3 p.m. Check out Councilmember Richardson's Facebook page for a link to join. In addition, we have partnered with six local, sorry, I'm just trying to scroll down here, six local restaurants to have them provide Jazz Fest attendees a 10% discount on all their purchases. So those restaurants are El Pollo Imperial, Robert Earl's Barbecue, uh, Sal's Gumbo Shack, Papuceria Kiosco, uh, Uptown Commons, which has, uh, if you just know, if, for those of you who haven't been, it's Main Chick and Oi Asian Fusion are there. Um, so I, I, if I remember correctly, when I read on the post online, they said you, if you call in to order your food, you just let them know that you're going to be watching the jazz festival and they'll give you 10% off. Uh, and then he also said that small business assistance is taking place at the Michelle Obama library every Tuesday and Wednesday for the rest of the month from 9am to 4pm. Uh, and for more information, uh, he put a link to economic development, small business restart grant program. Um, so that's in the chat, and I'll also post that on Facebook. So, there you go. Thank you very much. That was pretty quick. <laughs> so, anything else? I will entertain a motion to adjourn. We're right on time, actually. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right, then I'll second. <laughs> I'm not on your team. I mean, <laughs> anybody that's here votes, Lori, it's fine. Oh, Key you said he'll second. Off everybody. <laughs> okay. You. He said he'll second, but thank you, Lori. <laughs> okay. Second. Okay. That will do it for this evening. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Lori. Thank you for joining it's us. It's good everyone. to see other people. You know, it's good to see somebody besides.